Hey, I want to go over this beautiful vintage Seiko watch. I think it's from the late 60s, maybe early 70s. I got to go back and look at the date. A friend of mine got this watch for free. And unfortunately, this is what happens when you don't screw down the crown and you get it wet for just a few minutes. So you can sadly see there's a little bit of water damage there. But my friend loves this watch. He got it for free. He wanted to know if we could get it running and get it restored back to its original. Um, he loves the patina. So let's get started on this. First thing I got to do is remove the case. Uh, so the case I loosened up before, so we're going to take that right off. The crown is not screwed down. His crown's got an issue. He couldn't figure out why the crown had an issue. Well, it's because of the water damage. <laughs> so like I said, I think this watch was only exposed to a nominal amount of water, maybe a teaspoon, maybe a little more than a teaspoon. And it was exposed for just a few minutes. Um, the, the person who owned this watch did open up the case, try to dry it out. So you can see that they got, you know, they didn't cause a, a too much damage to it. Let's get that rotor out of that way and we'll unscrew that, put it in the parts bin. And what I'm going to do is gradually take a look as I go through this watch step by step, taking it apart to see where everything has a little bit of surface rust or where there's issues so that we can make note of those, take care of them later. Here's the spacer ring. We're going to remove that, put that in the parts bin and pop it out of the case. First thing we've got to do is take the hands and dial off. So I'm going to grab these hands, pop them off. This watch, unfortunately, is missing the second hand. Uh, I've had some conversation back and forth with my friend about what kind of a second hand we should put on there. He wants an original, so he ordered it, and we're going to wait for it to come in. So I'm going to go through this watch. Uh, I'm not going to case it yet because the most important thing is waiting for him to bring me the hand when we get it all done and put it back together. Here you can see I'm loosening up the two dial feet. There are two screws, one on either side of the watch. And they are a little bit rusty. There's the dial. This is an original dial. And it is in, believe it or not, excellent shape. Got this brass clip on here. This The C clip has to come off. And we're going to just pry it open just a little bit. That'll lift it over the uh, hour wheel once we get it open. And once we get it spread apart, I can lift it past the hour wheel, put that in the parts tray, and note that the cannon pinion and hour wheel have a little bit of rust on them. We're gonna remove the day ring and take a look at this real quick. It's got a little surface rust on it. That part is painted, so we have to be careful when we're working on that. I'm just gonna tickle these parts and see what moves and what doesn't move. If there's anything seized in here, we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful. This has got a plastic advance click for the date. So that piece, got to be careful when you put the watch in the cleaner. You want to remove that plastic uh, spring because it can actually get damaged. Now this little bridge here, this is the ring plate for the day, date ring. And the date ring here, when I pick this up, you're going to see that the cap for this little plate has got a little bit of rust on it. I have to remove that. And now I can just gently pull up this little date disc, put this aside. Now again, this is a painted part, so we have to be careful when we're cleaning it. Well, here is pretty much all the upside, upper side damage that was done by the water intrusion. We're going to flip it over, go back to the bottom of the watch, and I'm going to remove the balance cock here. Pull that out, pick it up, put it aside in the parts bin. Now we'll take the pallet bridge and we'll remove the two screws that hold that bridge in place so that we can remove the pallet fork. Get that in the parts bin. Gently lift up on this little bridge, put it aside, and I'll pull off the pallet fork here. Pallet fork doesn't have any damage to it, but it is a little dirty, so we're going to have to make sure we clean every single part on the watch. You know, there's a million ways to clean a watch, and this is my preferred method. What I like to do is grab my fiberglass brush. I've talked about these in videos before, and I like to wipe down any surface rust or corrosion that I see to just kind of get an indication of how damaged the parts might be on this watch. And by kind of slightly 
grazing over them with the fiberglass brush. I'm not going to leave too much debris, but these fiberglass brushes do leave a lot of little bits on this. And again, I'm just lightly rubbing it to see if I can get some of the surface rust out to see if there's any deeper corrosion like I have on this screw. Now the rotary gear that winds the mainspring looks really, really bad from this particular view because I haven't removed the bridge for the rotary winding system yet, but we're going to do that now. Get these three screws out of here. Sometimes if you get a little bit of rust in a watch, what you want to do is a couple days before you're going to work on it, after you've dried it all off, put some oil on the screw heads and allow it to penetrate into the threaded part of the screw. Hopefully it does. And that could loosen up any screws that are tight. Luckily in this watch, this again was just surface rust. We got lucky here. And I think my friend is going to enjoy this watch when we're done because I can already tell the way the surface rust is coming off that it's not going to be that bad. These vintage Seikos are still very popular. They still make almost the same movement. Uh, it's a very good tried and true movement. And these watches were very popular, like I said, in the 60s and 70s uh, when Seiko was selling them a lot of times at PXs for the military. Uh, you'd find a lot of these, a lot of them in Europe. Uh, but uh, Vietnam vets brought these home and by the troves, and they are very good watches, easy to surface, clean, and uh, easy to get running. So you can tell all the damage on this. We've got some work to do on this. There's a little bit more debris on there. Some of that's from, from the fiberglass brush. Some of it's just you know a little bit of pitted rust, but not terribly bad. Now we got one more plastic bit on this watch. This little plastic bridge here that's, that I've got my finger on, you can see is uh, holding in that little uh, U-shaped ratchet wheel or ratchet foot. I forget what they call those. I apologize if I'll look it up. These little teeth, uh, as the rotor spins, kind of winds the uh, ratcheting gear for the mainspring uh, back and forth. So it only winds in one direction and it clicks the gear always in the same direction. I'm just going to pry this little plastic piece off very carefully. Again, we'll hand clean it because we want to make sure it's nice and clean and supple. Here's that little ratcheting gear I was talking about. It just kind of comes off here and we've got some debris here. I'm going to scrape it off with the fiberglass brush. Again, these fiberglass brushes are great for surface rust, even some corrosion. They do uh, leave a little bit of a marking on the metal, so you got to be careful how hard you push down. And in this case, uh, as long as we just have surface corrosion, we can kind of get it off relatively easy. And again, I'm just lightly brushing these. It's going to leave a lot of debris. That's why I use watch paper. Now, before I take the ups upper side of the bridge plate, uh, the, the main bridge apart, or the frame of the watch, what I'm going to do is just lightly scrape off the surface. Again, I'm just kind of lightly brushing things off. I'm, I'm going to have to clean every single one of these parts, and this whole top section is going to have to come apart. But that's, that's common. That's typical. And anytime you have a water intrusion on a watch, you should take every single part out, clean it, wipe it down, try to get any staining off of it. I just took a phone call from somebody who, uh, one of my clients whose customer has a lady's Rolex. That lady's Rolex was severely water damaged. She forgot to type, tighten down the crown and she went swimming and she was at the beach. The salt water got in there and destroyed the watch. In cases like that, I'll, I'll often get the question, uh, can we put a quartz movement in the watch? Is there a replacement? And, and sadly, you know, there's no easy replacement for a mechanical movement to go into a quartz watch. Sometimes there are, but for the most part, there's not. And are those repairable? In the case of this particular lady's Rolex, I discovered that uh, because the watch was so severely damaged, uh, she should just get a new movement. We quoted her on a new movement, but um, uh, you know, people are on a tight budget right now. The economy isn't what it used to be and things just cost more. So that's what happens. Again, you're going to lightly brush off all the surface rust on these. I'm going to have to uh, take that mainspring barrel apart, pull out the mainspring, double check it. 
And again, I just want to go through every single part uh, lightly because I can see if I'm going to have to spend any time on these parts later when I uh, have everything disassembled. Here we got the ratchet wheel for the mainspring, and this is the winding main, uh, the winding gear. This gear is uh, not terrible. Again, we have just surface rust. Um, there's no pitting on it, but the teeth looked bad. Um, it's not too terribly bad. Once I got there with the fiberglass brush, I was able to get most of the debris out from in between the teeth. Once it goes into the cleaner, it'll come out pretty well. So there's the underside pre uh, pre-scraped off again we're just gonna go through all these little bits and pieces you can see here as I'm cleaning the teeth on this little winding gear for the uh, rotary system that I'm leaving quite a bit of fiberglass debris on the teeth I know it's a little out of focus I apologize guys the uh, the fiberglass does come off relatively easy in the ultrasonic cleaners. So as these bits get clean one at a time, they're going to look practically new when they come out. I'm going to remove this three quarter bridge. It's three screws holding it in. These are great movements. Seiko just makes decent watches. There's no frills or fuss, fussy stuff on them. They just work and they work well. They're very well made. Get these three screws off of here we'll pull off the bridge and take a look at the underside of it and again you can see quite a bit of surface rusting um, thank god it's just surface rust whoever owned this watch got it out of the water and dried it off relatively quickly not quite quick enough but uh, at least they discovered what they did and we get to it before we have major issues A lot of times people ask me, how do you get rust off of a watch movement? Um, I tend to use either mineral spirits or denatured alcohol to get most of the debris off. If I'm not using a fiberglass brush or a pick to get some of the debris off, that'll take a lot of the rust off. I don't recommend using anything with acids in it because acids will start pitting all the gears and the pinions. And if you run into that, you'll run into issues with the watch. You know, keeping accurate time again we're just going to use the fiberglass brush and wipe everything down fiberglass brushes are really good for this purpose they do leave a little brush mark if you look closely especially under a microscope but not as aggressive as like a brass or a copper brush I'm going to pull off the click this is the click spring for the mainspring barrel ratchet wheel. And we're just going to surface clean the outside of this mainspring barrel. It looks like it's got a little bit of rusting on the barrel arbor, but not too much. And I'm just going to scrape off any debris here, clean it out. So here we can see, uh, once we get that bridge out of place and get the gears out, the train, we've got some surface rust on the screws. It's important to get that out. And there is a little bit of uh, debris stuck to the jewel. So we're gonna let that clean in the ultrasonic cleaner. Again, uh, I'm gonna use mineral spirits on this to try to get some of the uh, surface damage cleaned off. It works really well. Denatured alcohol will work good, but you gotta be careful how long you keep it in. This movement's cleaning up really well. And here I'm gonna pull out the clutch and we've got some surface rusting on the clutch. That cleaned up very well. With the fiberglass brush, we're gonna keep working on that. And of course here you can see I like to use a pair of tweezers, a really sharp pair of tweezers to hold the parts while I brush them off. I do that with both the little pieces on the watch as well as the screws. And there's one screw holding this little bridge plate on. We'll take that off, pull that out. The purpose of that bridge is basically just to hold in the uh, center wheel. And again, just clean it off. 
any surface rust will get off anything else that's on there is going to come clean when we stick it in the cleaner so this is pre-cleaning of the movement you just saw it's got a lot of fiberglass debris on it now let's take a look at this dial you can see we've got some rust particles left on the dial and my friend got real lucky this dial cleaned up perfect and now i'm using a little bit of rotico on the painted surface of the date disc this uh, just to get the staining off of that paint this is an aluminum part so uh, it's it's painted aluminum and what we don't want to do is use anything abrasive on it because of the paint as well as on the bottom half again i'm just going to use a little fiberglass brush on this and just scrape off any staining that's left over on the aluminum i'm not going to try to get it all off it's not going to affect the movement or the operation of the watch but the rotico works good as a first attempt and anything that's a little bit darker or built into the metal uh, will come off with the fiberglass brush now these hands are original to this watch um, the rust on the hands it's never going to be perfect again it's just the way it is but we can get that mostly clean and get that surface rust removed the luminescent paint that's on the hands we have to be very very careful with we don't want to scratch that or poke holes in it remember this watch is about 40 45 years old and that's never going to look brand new we can relume those um, it can be very expensive to relume so I don't often recommend it if the customer wants to keep the patina and it's actually if, if you don't care you could just buy a new set of hands they are available um, they look they look like the watch when the watch was brand new they'll look original to it um, but if you're looking for that patina because you like everything original then this is what we do to handle that and again my friend likes to keep everything original he doesn't care about the staining on the luminescence so we're just going to scrape these off and then i'll wipe them down with some rotico to get any debris off you again you can't put these in a cleaner because the luminescence will come off there's that little rust stain on that hour hand it's going to be there forever so let's take a look at the rotor we're going to wipe that down and again i'll use the fiberglass brush on this off to the cleaner every single part comes apart on this watch everything goes in the cleaner when we get it all out and dry it off this is what we're left with i did pre-assemble this watch just to get it working again there is still a little bit of staining on some of the parts so you'll notice that in the video um, but again we don't want to be too aggressive because we don't want to uh, damage any of the parts as you know because th this watch ran perfectly before it got water damaged this inner bridge goes in again this is the bridge that holds in the center wheel and it keeps it nice and smooth that one screw holds it in place so we're gonna get that screw back in place tighten that down and we'll tickle all these little gears back into place you're gonna be very careful with these especially this escapement wheel those teeth can be damaged very easy so just gently place them back in the position you'll feel that they go into their pinion holes for the jewels and once they do we know we're in good shape there is a second hand pinion and gear that wheel is now nice and clean all the rust been removed and I've gone ahead and removed the mainspring cleaned it polished it put it back in re-oiled it and everything is in good shape there this is that click for the ratchet wheel on the rotor system uh, this watch is does not have a manual wind mode so it only winds automatically which means that you have to wear this watch or shake it up a few times to get it running before it'll start winding the mainspring something to keep in mind a lot of these Seiko movements do not manually wind from this era once we get the gears in place we can put this bridge in and tighten down the screws I typically do not tighten the screws down I only put them down just enough to hold the bridge in place then I'll go ahead and make sure that every gear is seated correctly once that's done I'll put the rest of the screws in and tighten them all down three screws hold this three-quarter bridge in place We'll make sure that click is free 
Once we know that it works good, we can go ahead and put the pallet fork back in place. That pallet fork came out perfectly clean. Got all the debris off of it, which is real nice. These are a little tricky to get back in place, so just be careful with it. Once it's seated in the jewel, then we can go ahead and get that bridge on. That looks pretty good. And we'll get the pallet bridge in place, seat it, and we'll tighten down the screw a little bit. We'll check the pallet fork and make sure that it's not uh, seated incorrectly. I'll check and see that the pinion pokes through, and it does. We're in good shape. Now we can go ahead and tighten that bridge down. Time to get the ratchet wheel on place for the barrel. And you can see how that clip works as I turn it. Kind of locks it in place. Very simple design. Very durable. It'll hold up forever. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a wind just to make sure that the pallet fork jumps back and forth with enough tension on it. There should be enough torque in that movement to slap that pallet fork back and forth as those jewels make contact with the escapement wheel. Once that's done, we'll throw the balance in. Now the balance, uh, the complete balance is made up of the balance wheel, the hair spring, and the balance cock. This hair spring had a little bit of damage to it. I did rinse it out in some denatured alcohol that did remove some of the rust, not all of it, so it does have a little bit of debris on there. We can compensate for that. Once that bridge is in place, we can go ahead and tighten it down. There is a little bit of wobble to this balance. Uh, I don't want to adjust it too much because uh, th it's old piece and it'll break. But the watch is running good, the hairspring is nice and clean, and the movement beats at a good 18,000 beats per hour. Time to get that date disc back in. Remember the date disc is the one with the numbers, the day disc is the one with the names of the day. We're going to assemble this the same way we disassemble it, or the opposite way. We're going to get that date disc in place, make sure that the click for the date disc is seated correctly, and we'll put the uh, holder plate down. There's two little guide pins to hold it in place. We'll just tap it in place and put the screw in, and gently tighten that screw up. Once that's in place, we can go ahead and give this a little test to make sure that the date disc turns. The day of the week has a separate little click spring on it. And that click spring right there has to be seated correctly on the inside or the underside of that day disc. And here you can see I'm just kind of moving it over and seating it. Remember that brass C-clip has to go back on, so we're going to go ahead and grab that. Put that over the hour wheel. And that's going to hold the date disc down in place. So we're just going to snap that down a little bit. And if it's a little loose, you can grab a pair of flat tweezers and just tighten that up a little bit. Once that's done, we know we're in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the dial feet screws. And we'll get the riser bridge up. This little riser keeps the dial from making contact with the day and date discs. And we'll get the dial seated correctly. Once that's seated, I can go ahead and tighten up those dial feet. Again, there's two screws, one on either side of the movement, and it corresponds with the, the dial feet on the dial. You can see I'm going ahead and just giving it a quick test, make sure that everything sets well before we go ahead and put the hands on. Once we get the watch set in the 12 o'clock position, which would be what, 12, p, or 12 a.m., we can go ahead and set our hour and minute hands. And again, the hour hand, again, has that little staining on it. We can't do anything about it. There's a little hole on that. Um, it's just the way it is. We want the patina, so we're not going to change those hands. Once they're set, uh, the one thing we're still missing is the second hand. So when my friend brings me the second hand that he ordered, we'll go ahead and slap that on. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and throw this on the timer, make sure everything works good, adjust it, and we'll set it aside for the final installation. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. If you know anybody who likes watch repair videos like these, go ahead and share this video with them because every little bit helps my channel to grow. Thank you for all your support. I appreciate it. Trust me.
And if any of you are involved in jewelry design, remember I've started a jewelry design course that's going to be on YouTube and on Patreon. Here you can see the watch is running and it's running really well. I'm gonna go ahead and check the rotor and make sure that the rotor winds the mainspring, which it does, thank God. And we're gonna let the watch run just to make sure that it keeps time and runs for about 30 hours.